Good morning, how are you?
yeah. byproduct of some, of some other process that they're doing, and then they're pressure treating it with a, it's like, kind of like a brine or a vinegar. And it's given the characteristics of a, of a, of a, of a hard hardwood, a thermoresistant, 50 year warranty. Yeah. So, pretty good stuff, but everything's almost ready to go. So you can see the on the ends, and this is where we're getting the face here around the area to see it. Uh, the biscuits lock it down. They come with one screw, okay? And I, I, I need to check. I asked the question and tell because everything is gone to stainless steel. So oh, that is the, stainless steel. That is the only. That is the only one screw that I don't know that. Established and built the last time. We'll see. That's what I'm talking about. This would be a true test for us. They are warranted. Oh, I am. They have a fire. Oh, I am. Yeah. You can go in front of me, that's fine. Oh no. So you can see the condition off the ground that you have at the end, wherever we have an end, mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna have. Um, you know, what it, whether, the, whether, whether it's boxed out or whether you just put material in and put some of those deal cells down and you can fill that with material and bring it up and you know, put something that, that uh, stays off the wood.
you guys can go ahead. goes down that you've got your your three B in the hole underneath it. Yeah, we have so much red into this big thing. It's coming around. Right. 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 Decided we're going to be around. Oh, maybe 110 or thereabouts. So. <laughs> Hopefully, we're still walking, right? Yes. Hey, but this is a handicap. What's that? Sure. So there's, there's two things that are going to be different. One is the physical improvements on the ground, and the second is the way we're going to manage visitation. Um, they're both equally important aspects of the master plan that we've been working on with the community for 20 plus years now, and uh, we actually never envisioned that, that it would be implemented this quickly. Uh, we were sort of forced into action by the events of last April, which was an unprecedented amount. I think 50 inches of rain in 24 hours hit this area. Um, and when that rain finally subsided, we were left with basically a, a broken park. The, there was a parking area here, uh, it was crushed coral, about 80% of that was all washed away by floodwaters. Um, our water line was broken, the entryway to the park was damaged, the beach was uh, gouged out, um, our septic systems were damaged. So in effect, we had a park that couldn't welcome visitors. and. Uh, of course, the greater, the greater issue is the, the multiple landslides along the highway, and we had a microcosm of that beyond this park on Nepali Coast, where the Kalalau Trail had five landslides on it. Um, so there's just a collective mess here that uh, created, you know, this is a crisis that created an amazing opportunity. We, um, we somehow managed to 
switch gears in terms of the, the improvement projects we had in the hopper and we borrowed from projects on other islands to encumber funds to try to repair this, which actually gives us the opportunity to implement a master plan at almost record speed. Right? Typically we have master plans that we work on for years and then we take just as long to get them built on the ground and in many cases we never finish them. So uh, almost overnight we're, we're creating a new park and when the highway is done we should be done here at Hyanna State Park and uh, it will be uh, probably a, you know it'll be a shock to some because it's a little bit it's going to be different. We're, we're going to have some new improvements you know there'll be concrete where there was gravel before um, but there'll also be there'll be a lot of gravel and there'll be you know pathways that are going to get people to the beach to keep them out of rock fall zones and uh, the largest change that's coming is we have for a long time realized that there were just too many people visiting here and they were they're impacting the resources but they're also greatly impacting the neighboring community and that community is the one who put the faith in us to work with us during this master plan and come up with this notion. So we're going to cut the numbers basically a little more than in half, you know, trying to get from sometimes 2,000 people a day down to a, a 900. And that's going to be done by a controlled entry system with online pre-purchasing pre of parking slots or a shuttle seat. A shuttle has long been envisioned as part of the the, the solution for North Shore traffic jams here and that's another related aspect that's coming together as a result of the flood. Um, lots of people working um, independently but also collaborating to create a greater solution for this this community and, and this park. So again I think that when we cut the numbers down to this park there's no real separation between those coming here and those going on the trail. Haena is the gateway to Nepali. There's no other way to get onto the Kalalau Trail. So the numbers on that trail will be reduced. Uh, the number of overnight users will remain the same. You know, they'll still, you'll still be able to go and, and camp overnight. You won't be able to park here before you go. That's a change. You'll have to get here by, by shuttle or other means because we've contracted the number of parking places from 300 plus down to 100, which is part of our, our, our method of trying to control the unfettered access to these places. So um, the experience on the coast should remain largely the same once you pass Hanukapiai Valley. Um, up until then, it's going to be a lighter, you know, less traffic. And uh, we'll see. There's going to be bumps along the road. You know, we know no nothing this complicated can just, is going to be smooth from the start. But uh, we're committed to adapting and getting it right. So we want to make sure that locals have access and that everybody's quality of experience is enhanced through these measures. Correct, we've, we've long known about the rockfall hazard of these adjacent cliffs which, which tower over the park and uh, that was exacerbated by a recent, there was a fire and then the flooded, flooding rains, both of those illustrated the fact that those who did the studies were correct. A lot of rocks came down and they, they were, it was a visible uh, feature um, during those those aspects. So the plan is envisioned moving the pedestrians out of the path of rockfall and so to do that we've created an alternative pedestrian path but I also think it's going to be a great enhanced experience. It's a boardwalk trail it partially goes through the the, the traditional Lo'i system which is going to be honestly for the visitors kind of an immersive experience and I think it's really going to add to the educational value of their visit. Well, we have to do something, right? I mean, this, this demand came from, gen actually it came from the community, and while we didn't create the situation with the number of visitors that are here, we certainly have to be part of the solution in adapting to it. Our first and foremost uh, mission, of course, is to protect natural and cultural resources. And when you have thousands of people tromping through areas that are full of sensitive cultural resources and endangered species, et cetera, um, it is our duty to, to limit that impact and one of the best ways to limit that impact is to limit visitation. Now I think that for out-of-state visitors it's not going to be a, a foreign concept at all on the mainland, in other areas, places like Machu Picchu. Um, 
famous world destinations like Nepali, that's common practice already because the, they, they need to control the impacts of those places. And I think that the average visitor is going to appreciate actually knowing that they have, hey, I have a reserved parking place. I don't have to come down and get turned around or park a mile away. Um, for some, it's going to be better. And we're also trying to you know, create a situation where there's, there's always room for the locals who want to visit. We know they visit in smaller numbers. I think it's 90% out of state. But if we, if we do this perfectly, we won't have any complaints. If we do it well, I'll only have complaints from tourists. Like I said, we, we, would, we had no money in the budget for these improvements. So we, uh, we kind of made a, a small miracle happen here. And uh, time will tell if, if, we've, if we've done it well. I, I, think we, I think we will end up very pleased with the end product and particularly the, the, the higher quality of experience. And uh, you know, it's, it's not easy to look at a landscape like this and see it covered with gravel and you know, we're gonna have some concrete here and there. Um, but if, if, if that manages the flow and the, the tensions between the visitors and the community, um, it'll be worth it.